I think we can kick this off. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, this is, um, I think it's our maybe our fourth or fifth inside the build where we uh, where we walk through um, technical workshops and high level topics uh, around building on Agoric integrations. Uh, and today we're uh, we're really fortunate to have Philip from Pine Street Labs. They're going to walk through the recent uh, Wallet OS integration. Um, and so, so Philip, um, for anyone watching this after the fact, can you kind of give a high level of um, about Pine Street Labs, Wallet OS, and, and uh, kind of walk us through uh, what, what we should expect today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, pleasure to be here. Uh, and I think yesterday was also a really great Twitter spaces. Um, but uh, yeah, P Pine Street Labs, uh, we're, uh, we're solving what I think is one of the most interesting problems in crypto, which is how do we get businesses to meaningfully adopt blockchain? And uh, so far, the way we've been approaching this problem is uh, by allowing engineers at these companies to start using new blockchains um, via an API. And, um, you know, to kind of like step back and talk a little bit more about that problem in depth, um, you know, where, where we are today, November 2023, there are so many blockchains and there's going to be more layer twos, there's going to be layer threes, fours, who, who knows what. But what, what this is causing is really a strain for uh, companies and their engineering teams to manage the transaction life cycles, managing the, um, you know, the ledger, managing how you talk to different chains, let alone just transfer and receive. There's other things like staking and governance and NFTs. And so there's like a lot of things you can do in this new on-chain economy. And uh, the way we're, you know, helping businesses um, adopt these new chains is through wa Wallet OS. And what Wallet OS is, and we'll dive into this presentation, is um, an API to both read and mutate the chain without worrying about the nuances of any chain that you want to support. Um, this allows, you know, if you're a business, to go multi-chain to support new on-chain primitives like staking or NFTs. Um, but also um, really like help like a new startup just get, you know, kick the ground running in terms of focusing on the product that they're trying to build instead of building like that low level, um, you know, like in infra that you have to start with. Um, where I come from, you know, I'm Philip. I realized I didn't introduce myself. Um, uh, Philip Glasman uh, co-founded Pine Street Labs um, in the beginning of last year and in a previous life have jumped around a lot in crypto, uh, worked at places like Bitmain uh, on their wallet, uh, worked at River Financial, which is a Bitcoin brokerage based in the States, uh, worked on Lightning Network integration there, as well as Bitcoin custody. And so was very familiar with the problem of, you know, supporting chains, supporting different in interfaces and making it easier for developers to, you know, manage the transaction lifecycle. You know, um, I kind of gave a quick, uh, is my stream running? Yes, it is. Cool. Um, I kind of give like a quick overview of, of the company. Um, you know, really our purpose is to help businesses, um, you know, adopt new blockchains like Agoric and, um, you know, started in the beginning of last year. And really we're focused on helping developers and businesses adopt these new, uh, blockchains. Um, little bit about the team, but, um, it, come from a lot of different places, A16C Crypto, Coinless, Fact, River, Fractal, Cloudflare. So very diverse set of experiences. Um, and the presentation today, what I have is really uh, about like this mental model, like thinking about what it takes to build a wallet. And you can probably replace wallet with really like any product that is talking to a chain. Uh, I think wallet is just like the most generic term, but um, if you're building, let's say, um, Know, a protocol on Agoric, uh, a wallet on Agoric, an exchange, custodian, um, you know, a bridge, maybe a DAP. Like, there is going to be a point in that like uh, development process where you're going to need to do something on chain. Um, and so this is like this like uh, you know creating like a mental framework about like how do you manage that interaction um, on chain. And so um, maybe you can replace the word our wallet with a wallet. And maybe we can go through just quickly, like about what it takes to like build a custodian exchange, a wallet, whatever it is. Um, the first step is obviously like keys, what you're going to sign with. Um, if you're building a multi-chain product, there are a lot of different types of keys. Um, 
And what I mean by that is there are many different curves that blockchains support. Two of the most popular, obviously, are SecP 256K1. Um, there's also Edwards curves and different variants of Edwards curves that blockchains have adopted. And then there's obviously a different signature algorithm, right? There are, you know, NOR, PCDSA, EDDSA. And um, when you're like presented with like building a multi-chain product, you have to like figure out one, like, you know, the custody of these coins, but let alone like, how do you like create these signatures? Um, how do you like manage the overall like identification of different keys and how they relate to wallets? And so that's, you know, um, like part of the framework of when it's time to like actually develop something um, like a wallet. Um, the other like frameworks to really think about is like receiving. So how do I create an address, an account or a script? Uh, each chain is fundamentally different. Um, in the case of Agoric, right? Like you don't need to have an on-chain interaction to create an account. You can have, you know, just a single like key pair and then, um, that could be your, your you know, account. Um, there is an on-chain interaction later on when it comes to like receiving like an account number, an account sequence. But generally speaking, you don't need to interact with the chain. Some blockchains require on-chain interactions to create accounts, maybe staking accounts. Um, I think the most interesting chain is probably Flow, where you need to actually um, have an on-chain transaction in order to create your initial account, which is really interesting. Um, but, you know, really highlighting the fact that, like, each chain is fundamentally different when it comes to, uh, like, the single, like, seemingly obvious step in the process. Um, the next part that we'll talk about is, like, really, like, tracking state. And that's going to be, like, super interesting. Um, transferring, um, obviously, a very important part of, of the, you know, like, application lifecycle. But, you know, creating the proper payload is really important. But let alone that is... You know, what am I signing? Who am I sending to? Um, why am I signing? And so um, a lot of these questions have to be answered when you're creating like transfer transactions. Um, the same with staking, and we can kind of like group these two together. Um, but the transaction lifecycle piece is also like um, an interesting like area to kind of dive into. Um, and this is probably like the hardest thing to grok as a developer in the space because there's just so many edge cases that could happen. You know. A lot of errors could happen. You're dealing with, with the network. There are network errors. Things could happen in the mempool. Your transaction might not be included. Um, there are consensus changes that happen. You know, hard fork, something that was invalid is now valid. Soft fork, um, the opposite. Uh, there are chain halts, reorg. Um, and so like, there's a lot of consensus things that could happen in like managing that both for your users and also for you know, your own ledger is incredibly important, hard to do. Um, and in this like bucket of like life cycle, there's a lot of state that a wallet has to manage. Uh, besides the keys and the ledger, there's also all these like, um, I like to call them like, I guess like um, conflicting states that could happen in a wallet. So nonces are a particular example, um, an account nonce on Ethereum, a block hash on Solana. These are inputs to a transaction that could fundamentally change um, if your transaction is valid on the network. Um, in the case of Bitcoin or like other UTXO chains, there's coin selection that you have to deal with. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously with like Tendermint chains in general, there are, you know, account sequences, account numbers, and all of this is like, you know, state that could fundamentally change the, you know, validity of a transaction. Um, uh, this doesn't even touch account abstraction, network fees. I think I've created a pretty long list of like, you know, there is a lot of things to consider um, to building a successful product. And um, I think Wallet OS is really that, you know, that stepping stone to addressing a lot of these problems. Um, and so I think if you're building an Agoric today um, and you were maybe on a particular issue um, and you're really focused on shipping your product to market and don't want to deal with this sort of, you know, like pain point, I think that's where Wallet OS fundamentally helps. Um, if you're going multi-chain, like maybe you understand Agoric really well and um, you also want to support maybe Osmosis or, you know, Celestia, whatever it is, um, Going multi-chain requires, you know, a bit of effort, and maybe Wallet OS could be that crush to help you. 
Um, there's many different w a avenues to approach this. And I, I think for the rest of the presentation, um, I'm gonna go through just addressing how WalletOS solves a lot of these pain points. Um, I'm not gonna show like code or JSON, but uh, I will link, I guess I could link this now, but I can link our docs for engineers that are particularly interested to just skipping a lot of these mental models and going straight into the code. Um, but what WalletOS is, is a JSON RPC um, web server. Um, we deploy both in the cloud and on-prem. And it's an interface for both reading and writing to the chains. So when I talk about reading, I'm talking about getting notified about deposits, withdrawals, chain hall, things happening on chain. When I'm talking about writing, I'm, I'm talking about creating payloads to transfer, to stake, to unstake, um, really building that whole flow. Um, we support 25 different blockchains. So Goric is one of them. And we sit above the keys and below the application layer. And so what I mean by that is um, we don't own private key material. You own it as a developer. All we're doing is helping you translate different actions that you want to do on-chain as well as get information about those actions. So we operate just strictly on like public key material or account, you know, public account information, never on the actual like raw private key. Um, and a design principle that we have is that the API is uniform. So you'll never see an endpoint that's specific to a particular blockchain. Um, if you do, I think we failed. I think what this means as a developer is that um, you can build multi-chain products without any headache. Um, every single API endpoint works the same, regardless of if it's on Agoric, Bitcoin, or Solana. Um, and it's really easy to integrate. And we'll talk about the different, you know, overall workflows that you can expect. So I will talk the rest of this presentation about from the context of Agoric. Um, so obviously, um, you don't need to create an on-chain transaction to start receiving money on Agoric, but all you need to do is create a public key. Um, and we have a really, you know, simple endpoint to take a public key, convert it to an address. Pretty straightforward. Um, that's not the exciting part, obviously. The exciting part here is that you can actually subscribe to um, deposits using our API. And so we have like a, these web sockets that we offer to essentially listen in on a particular set of addresses that you're listening to and receive notifications about new transactions that affect those addresses. So maybe if I'm building, you know, uh, ADAP and on the Goric, and I want to really create a real time user experience about a deposit or, you know, maybe something that had to happen on chain, I can use this WebSocket. It's a really nice crust to deliver that user experience. Um, in the case of like transferring, if I wanted to transfer on Agoric, um, it's, we have a very simple transfer endpoint. And um, in the case of like blockchains that have, that let you batch, you can transfer to multiple recipients. Um, and so what this means is that, you know, as a user talking to WalletOS, you can tell us like, hey, I want to send, you know, um, some bills. <laughs> we should have probably updated this on uh, for Agoric, but I can say, um, you know, send some bo some build on, on uh, you know, on, on Agoric to a particular recipient. And what WalletOS returns is the actual like transaction, uh, what to sign and how to sign it. And so if you go back, there's many different, you know, signature algorithms, many different keys. Um, and this payload helps you understand, okay, which key would, will I have to sign with? Um, what exactly are the like things that I have to sign? So both like the actual digest, but also the pre-image to the digest. And what, uh, what WalletOS also allows you to do is actually take a transaction and try to spill out its effect. And so um, the naive and dangerous way of operating an exchange or wallet is take anything, sign it, and move on with your day. Um, that's not a good business model. Um, it doesn't last because, you know, obviously uh, you need to understand what you're signing before you sign. And so we have this endpoint in the docs you can see called explain transactions. And this is really for a signer to 
first understand what are the balance effects happening in this transaction? Are there any other like side effects happening? Is it a smart contract call interaction? Am I, you know, about to like stake and lock up money? Um, what are the fees of this transaction? And so all of that is really handled for you in a uniform way. And like I said, it works on Agoric and just as much as it works on, you know, Solana and Bitcoin and every other chain. Um, the next part, obviously, you create a signature using uh, the payloads and the keys that we tell you to use. And uh, you provide us with three simple values in the case of VCDSA, and you pass it back to WalletOS. And we broadcast, finalize it, and send it to the network through the public mempools. Um, so again, kind of covering this, um, but this, but that's not where you know the story ends. Um, your transaction has to make it into a block. It has to be in a finalized block. Um, you want to actually like track the success of it. You know, it could fail along the way. Maybe there is, you know, a mempool issue. Maybe there's a hard fork. Maybe there is a chain halt. There's a lot of different things that can happen, like I said in the beginning of this presentation. Um, but, you know, our, our API lets you subscribe to the transaction and track its, uh, you know, success through that, you know, happy path life cycle. Um, Another thing to note, and something that maybe is not obvious, is that the effect that you are expecting to happen before you broadcast could be different after you broadcast. Um, I think like a very concrete example is probably like EIP uh, 1559 on Ethereum, where you're like committing to a maximum fee, but you actually don't know what that fee is going to be until you, you know, get it finalized in the block. Um, there are some networks that operate that way where, you know, the fees are kind of variable up to a range. And so you actually don't know. Um, there's other situations where, you know, you're interacting with a smart contract and the effects might be different where um, you expected to send, you know, um, to USDC to a recipient, but the, along the path of the smart contract e execution, there might've been a reversion or um, which, you know, means that the money didn't arrive, but you still paid the fee. Um, there's other things that could happen, like, you know, you ran out of gas, and so you actually weren't even able to send that money. Um, and so there's a lot of different effects that you have to, like, kind of consider along this path. Yeah, um, so Santi asked, is that address independently for every chain? Uh, yes, but the for the user, um, there is essentially a enumeration of different variants that you can expect for things to fail. And so um, we catalog those variants and manage it differently for each chain because each chain maybe has different our contract execution or um, um, different transaction life cycles. But as a user of WalletOS, um, you're just dealing with those high level variants. And um, what that means is that, you know, you have an object that you get back in the response. It could be one of, let's say, 10 fields. And your client code could do certain things based on those 10 fields. So um, maybe if it's an out-of-gas error, you will do something differently with your logic uh, client side. If it's a reversion, um, maybe you'll present something to the user about, hey, this transaction's on chain, but it reverted. Um, so we give that opportunity to the user to kind of customize based on the logic, um, based on a specific set of, uh, of um, variants. Cool. Um, staking is something that I particularly find really interesting. Um, so uh, I think one of the really cool things about um, a lot of chains lately, uh, specifically Agoric, is, um, you know, earning uh, rewards and securing the network that way. Um, obviously, it's, uh, or maybe not so obvious, but every chain has different staking rules. Um, the, uh, you know, Solana, Agoric, Osmosis, whatever, whatever chain you're going to pick is going to be fundamentally different. And so, um, it's kind of hard to grok what those differences are. And I think we've done a pretty good job at um, 
trying to explain what the differences are when it comes to staking on different chains. Um, but this is a whole can of worms. And I think like, um, I think products today launching, like staking is kind of a centerpiece of the product and it really like differentiates them. Um, and at least that we've been seeing. And so I think like with Wallet OS, staking is less of a endeavor than it could be. And I'll kind of walk through about like how you can stake. Um, the first thing to staking is obviously like understanding what are the rules. Um, so we have an endpoint called staking details. So you can query a specific network. Uh, you can query Agoric and you can get back staking rules. What that means is as a developer, you probably want to present to your users the whole like synopsis of, you know, what, what, what can I stake on this network? So like which particular asset or token? Um, how do I claim my stake? Are there any like bonding on bonding periods? Is there like a minimum delegation about? Um, there is a whole slew of different things. There's like APR, APY, um, I guess, uh, with regards to like, you know, if you're to treat staking as like, you know, as a reward system. And so um, a lot of these rules are um, different per chain. And what we did is essentially have an endpoint that is the same per chain. And it's just a list of different like um, um, variants that could exist within the system. And once you maybe, pres you know, you can build up a really cool UI to your user based on our staking rules. So you can say, you know, on Agoric, um, it supports different ways to claim. You can actually claim your rewards or you could claim them automatically when you undelegate. You can, you know, delegate to different validators. Um, and once you've like built that UI, the next part is obviously to create that staking transaction. And so the first, like, you know, when, when and when I'm talking about staking, I'm partic particularly talking about delegated staking. And so as a user, I can say, you know, I want to delegate um, a couple of build tokens to a validator that has maybe a low commission and um, I think is doing a good job protecting the network. So I can create that transaction with Wallet OS. Again, I get back that same thing where it, it is the transaction, what to sign and how to sign. And I can create a signature. Before I create the signature, I should probably check what I'm signing using explain transaction. And then I, you know, in the case of Agoric, it's ECDSA. So I just return the VRNS, pass it back to Wallet OS, and I can go ahead and broadcast my first staking transaction. And again, Similar workflow, making sure it actually lands, um, making sure that uh, there's no reversion, um, and that your uh, bill tokens that you are, you know, delegating are actually in that like delegated phase. Um, one thing to note: there's a bunch of other transactions that have to happen in this like life cycle. So there's like you know, undelegation, claiming rewards, etc., and we manage that all for you. I just kind of run through the different things that could happen. You know, the happy case, your block, your transaction gets included and it's finalized. Thank God, but it could also revert. And Waldorf tries to explain to you why things could be rejected, um, reverted, rejected meaning maybe it's just straight out rejected from the mempool for a lot of different reasons. Maybe you never got included in the block. Maybe you got censored. Um, who knows? Um, forks. Uh, I think we do we do a pretty good job at detecting forks. Um, they happen on net, on networks all the time, um, and you definitely want to be in the case of like proof of stake. You definitely want to be in the case of like the finalized chain in proof of work. You want to be on the heaviest chain. And these are some of the networks that we support. Um, Agoric is one of them, but we have also many more. So if you're building something on Agoric and you want to go multi-chain or you already support something that is not Agoric and want to support Agoric, I think we can help. And um, feel free to DM me on Discord or um, just leave your like, like a message in the chat. That's all I got. So if anyone has any questions, um, now would be a good time. Yeah, this was awesome. Cool, thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll let people bring up some questions. Thanks, Chris.
I don't know if anyone from our team has uh, any specific questions. No specific questions. This was a really great presentation. Thank you. While we give people in the audience a few minutes to uh, either think of questions or work up the courage if they've got one that they just haven't quite gotten around to asking yet. Um, Philip, on the spaces yesterday, you had... So, well, first off, thank you very much for this. It was super cool to uh, go a little bit deeper into Wild OS working in action. Very neat to see under the hood. Um, you talked a little bit about um, you how you were in... You had some good feedback on uh, Zoe and sort of how, like, Agoric transactions are a little bit different and unique, um, and that kind of led into some thoughts on how AutoS and the integration with Build could potentially change in the future. Would you mind uh, sharing a little bit of that again, or, or anyone who might not have made it to the spaces? Uh, yeah. So um, let me think about how to phrase this. Uh, it's like part of something that I am. Um, pretty uh, um, invested in day to day is really like understanding a lot of the smart contract execution layers, the VMs, um, and uh, you know whether it's like Solana VM, EVM, a lot of different Cosmos SDK stuff, um, you know, Flow, Near, whatever it is. Uh, I think uh, I get to see a lot of wild stuff. <laughs> out in the wild and then I get to see some like interesting things as well and like things that catch my attention. Um, um, and I think like yesterday during our Twitter spaces, we talked about Zoe a bit. Um, and I think it was in the thread of um, both like how the framework allows developers to um, prevent a lot of the like common pitfalls that we learned as an industry when it comes to writing solidity. Yeah. Um, which, you know, like obvious things like re-entrancy um, and really building these like safeguards around the developers for like how they write their code is like something that makes, um, you know, some, something that makes like Zoe stand out. Um, as we were like integrating um, Goric, there were, you know, obviously that is an interesting point because like that informs us how we do how we handle edge cases a lot of the like thinking that we do adversarially is like what's going to happen on this chain what is going to go wrong and how do we like inform the users before they sign and after they broadcast what are the different effects that could happen and mm -hmm. so you know um that's something that like understanding how the execution layer works informs our thinking um there's other like interesting things i guess in our in integration that we found like ERTP and like how that interface evolves is going to be like super neat. Um, in our system, we treat like native tokens very differently than like something that we call layered tokens. And a layer token is essentially a token that has an in interface like think SPL or ERC20. And so okay. ERTP is like one of these, um, you know, we support right now like IBC and ISP. Um, and ERTP is going to be an interesting like interface to like work with um as it develops and like gets like more like um you know like products built on top of it um uh so like i think that's something that like we're gonna be paying like pretty close attention to and i'm sure other people are um because that's going to be like a really neat way of just like safely like sending and receiving assets great thank you so much that was if possible even better than uh, your response yesterday <laughs> thank you <laughs> Thank you. All right. It looks like we don't have any uh, specific community questions, but um, Philip, this was this is a pleasure having you and, and Pine Street Labs. Thank you so much for walking through Wallet OS and the, the recent integration with Agoric and you know, seeing all of these cross-chain opportunities is super exciting for us. So we, we love to see it. Thank you so much. This is a blast. Cool. Thank you. Um, so we'll we'll have this. Uh, we'll put this recording up on YouTube uh, after this, and you can catch it there if you want to watch it later. Um, but I think I think that's pretty much a wrap. Thanks thanks everyone in the audience for joining. Um, we don't have a specific date or time for the next inside the build, but coming soon. Be on the lookout for it. And uh, thank you. Thank you for stopping by, joining, watching. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone.